Okay, so here we are making a video, Laurie and Eric. So in this video, I wanted to ask Eric about his perspective on jobs and the economy and just kind of just from a grassroots kind of a regular human standpoint. So like basically, how's life been treating you lately, Eric? Well, I'm going to say that uh, I got laid off two years ago because Obama cut all of our military contracts. And, uh, you know, they keep on, they kept on telling us at that time that the economy was, like, kind of getting better. But, uh, you know, uh, for the first six months while I was laid off, I was on unemployment. Um, I had no from real, Pennsylvania. And I'm from Pennsylvania. I had no real luck being on unemployment and trying to get a job. You know, and up just, until that time, you had a pretty steady job for how long? How long? Yeah, more than and, a year. Right? right up till then, I worked for seven years okay. for this company, and uh, you know everything was going really great. And then there was, there was actually there was fifteen hundred of us that got laid off at the same time. Uh, within like a month or two, they just kind of laid everybody off. That can take down a whole town. Yeah, so my. My neighborhood, my county, whatever you want to call it in Pennsylvania, everyone was looking for the same type of jobs, and, uh, you know, this wasn't any to be found. So that was, like I say, that was May of 2013, and by January 2014, uh, my unemployment had run out because they didn't do an extension. So at that time, I was forced to... Uh, to pick up some temporary work. So I was picking up some temporary work and I had a part-time job, but still they didn't give me full-time work. So let's just kind of go with the bottom line is, you know, it's just been a struggle for me and I consider myself, well, I went from middle class down to lower class because I was making say $23 an hour and now the only jobs that are available are 10 11 and $12 an hour jobs. And up until a month ago, you were a homeowner. Yeah, up until a year ago, oh, I'm sorry, a week, a week ago or whatever, a month ago, yeah, yeah I had to sell my house because it was going to go into foreclosure. And luckily, I sold it before it did go into foreclosure and it didn't ruin my credit. But, uh, you know, it's really been... Up, down, up, down, up, down. It's just trying to find a full-time job today has really been hard because companies aren't giving you benefits. Companies won't even give you 40 hours. Um, yeah. And they don't want to pay insurance. You know, even with the Obamacare, it still seems that uh, it just really didn't help the system. So when you hear politicians talk about well, we're going to improve our infrastructure and we're going to rebuild bridges and rebuild roads. I don't think that helps you. Right. right? It's not helping me because my line of work mm -hmm. obviously is more, we'll call it the factory environment, uh, industrial environment. So, you know, in order to get construction jobs, then I need to have more of a skill Definitely, if I want to get paid more than, say, $12 an hour, I have to have a skill, but, you know, it's I don't have that skill. Mm -hmm. So, it's it's just been one roller coaster ride after another. You know, I've been finding uh, temporary jobs, but they don't last, or they're not, they don't get turned into full-time, and so now it's two years later. And I'm still in the same boat. I'm still unemployed, working a part-time job because that's all that's really available. And I am still can't find a full-time job. Mm -hmm. And I've moved in with Lori and I'm just, I'm hoping one of these days that something goes right for me. Mm -hmm. With a better president, maybe it would. You know, someone that really is helping us now I'm lower class, you know, I'm not middle class anymore. I'm with the lower class people just trying to survive. Yep. So, 
this is just I wanted to get Eric to weigh in on life on the ground. I know that for my part, I would have liked to have gone back to work uh, after Mark passed away, but I had been a tech writer about probably eight years ago, and uh, it's not quite all that easy. I had also been in the drafting field, and just to get right back into a field like that, uh, you know, I'm not going to be building bridges anytime soon either, you know, so those types of jobs don't help me. Yeah. Yeah, and it's not like I haven't tried. I've I've tried, and I just keep trying because you have to. You know, you mm -hmm. have to keep fighting. Just can't And stop. as a matter of fact, um, Disney, not only does Disney pay very low for their, their um, the front of the state, what, there's a name for it, their... Cast mm -hmm. members. Or. Yeah, but that even in the, uh, the career side of things, the engineers and things, they just made headline news for replacing some of them with uh, foreign, foreign workers and had the full-time employees train their replacement for uh, foreign workers or else they wouldn't get a bonus, some kind of exit bonus. Hmm. Okay. So, yeah, there's a bunch of sticky situations going on. Yeah, I got, I'm a part-timer right now at Disney, but unfortunately... It's zero to 25 hours, and I didn't even know that that was what part-time meant. Mm -hmm. So lately I've been getting zero hours. So, it's again, I don't really want to blame anyone in particular. If we had a country that was run better, that had the so-called jobs that they say out there that are available, you know, then normal middle-class people would still not be in the lower class section struggling. Did you ever watch the cartoon, uh, The Jetsons? Yeah. Or even Fred Flintstone, but The sure. Jetsons was, um, The Jetsons were m much more like you because he worked in a factory that made sprockets, like whatever a sprocket is. But, you know, it just sort of implied that every day he was going to go to the same factory, he was going to work for Mr. Slate every day, and, um, you know, it just implied a real solid job security. Even in uh, Disney, in um, the Carousel of Progress, I've been through that, right? Yeah, I went. Um, so he goes through the stages, and he says, now we've got a new refrigerator, and it implies that he, the sole breadwinner of the house, because wife, wife doesn't work in that scene, so it implies that he's stable, and he can just upgrade his appliances as the technology becomes right. available. And a whole bunch of other show, TV shows that I can think of um, from the Honeymooners on. It just implies this suburbia, stable lifestyle that you can have the steady job. And, and then if you fail from there, well, it's probably because you, you know, blew your money or you were you know, you weren't responsible in right. some way, but, um, but for a long time, it seems like the opportunities were there if you wanted to work hard and follow the rules and, you know, play, uh, play by society's rules and, and, and everything. And, um, and now it just doesn't seem like the opportunities are there. Yeah. Yeah. The job opportunities are really, uh, not there. I will say, if you're trying to get a job on Craigslist, sometimes you, all it is is just false advertisement. Mm -hmm. So that's even kind of frustrating because a lot of times you apply it on Craigslist and then I'm getting 10 junk mail things and I never even hear from the place I responded. So I don't know if it's a, you know, it could be just a scam just to get people's email to solicitate yeah. or I went to one of those one time it was like selling knives door to door it looked like a real job but it wasn't and you had to like invest in a kit in order to <laughs> right so <laughs> but, so they didn't care whether you succeeded or not because you had already bought their product right so I don't know you know again say our the presidents that keep coming in they they keep addressing issues but they're still just not helping out the common American worker that mm -hmm. needs a full-time job in order to 
support a family or even just to survive. And, you know, I just yeah. think America is turning into a more of a poverty country because these presidents just are, you know, they're focusing on things that really aren't helping us or if they do try to help us, they're not giving enough, they're taking more away. And it's funny because even in the most, um, in the scenario of giveaways, you know, even if it were to be possible to give away a free education and demand that the salaries go to $15 an hour, and this is pretty much Bernie Sanders thing, but even if it was possible, um, let's say the free college education, they have to graduate and then they have to go get a job someplace, you know? And it's beginning to be like, even if you were given a bunch of stuff, you know, free house, free anything, it's just now what do you do? Where do you go? It seems like you're going to need to go to all the buildings that are being done. Like, uh, I don't know if I showed you a video of, um, of a train track being made in China. It was a massive machine that it was like, it was kind of like laying down like a monorail. It was like as if the train would have been able to continue on its journey as the track was being built pretty much right in front of it. And it was just technology that we haven't seen here. It used to be USA. We were arrogant. We were obnoxious. We had the best of everything. And now it's like, um, China, Dubai, they're building tall buildings. Dubai keeps on saying the best, the biggest aquarium, the biggest mall, the biggest skyscrapers, um, biggest trans public transportation and uh, bullet trains and all that. And we're not doing anything. We're not going to the moon. Um, there was a mission to, to Mars that didn't even get televised. I had to watch it on the internet. And it's like, what is it, boring or something these days? In fact, um, that was a U.S., but there was a... Okay, I could go on. There was an asteroid thing, but that was not a U.S. That was another country. And now we're watching, like, Russia is taken over for military operations in the Middle East. So, I don't know. It's just, um, it's just strange to be watching this take place. Right, in America that's yeah. supposed to be for the people, you know, and it's more concerned about their allies and, and all that. And we're turning into suffering a suffering As a matter of fact, country. like, uh, even just like, okay, I do agree that, you know, Trump has a unique, well, obviously I'm a Trump supporter, but uh, Trump has a unique personality where he, he brags more than the average person. But um, I remember when, see, you, there's a difference in age between us, but in the Olympics, the United States hockey team won one year, and I was maybe 19 or so at that time. And so uh, the drinking age was 18, so I was able to be at a bar. And we were just obnoxiously waving flags and proud USA. And we were just over the top obnoxious, basically. And lately, it almost seems like there's this, this like desire to be like, kind of like non-American anymore. Yeah. Like, you know, like like almost almost as if we don't want to be the best anymore. Like, oh, we're a little bit like concerned about that now. So, um, in a way, just that, that personality that people are cringing on is like, that's, we used to, a whole bunch of us used to be like that. You know? <laughs> like when, when the first war, um, the Bush senior war started, um, that was a real short one. And in Washington, D.C., they had a victory parade. And when the Trident II missile launcher, which was designed by Raytheon Corporation in Massachusetts, when that came down the road, I mean, people were just screaming and yelling and, you know, being so proud because it had done its job successfully. Our technology, our science, scientists, um, my late husband, Mark, was involved in the Department of Defense and night vision and um, just, you know, just building the latest and the greatest. And even, even other areas like uh, Steve Jobs designed the iPad that we're recording on. And he worked way beyond 
getting rich. You know, Bill Gates stopped, but Steve Jobs, he was really wanting, you know, the, the curves and the radiuses to be just right. And that's, and in fact, the Russian President Putin says one thing he highly respects of the United States that we barely still have is our, um, oh, what was the word? Um, something about our, um, our drive that Americans still are barely hanging on to. And I just hope we can still hang on to that, you know, before it gets too late. Yeah, I can say that uh, it is a... This country is tougher today, tougher as in tougher to survive in this mm -hmm. country. So it makes people want to go somewhere else mm -hmm. that possibly has it better than, you know, our uh, how reaction to how things are going downhill instead of uh, so-called, you know, getting better yeah, for I mean, the American people. You know? Yeah, I mean, when people are actually, my, my aunt goes and gets her dental work, believe it or not, in Mexico. You know, um, and some people are getting operations like in India. Uh, that never, I mean, it's still much more rare. There's still more people that are coming here, luckily, you know. But, you know, it didn't used to be the case at all. Yeah, so. Okay. That will wrap it up here. All right, bye-bye.